A few weeks ago, I made a video showing the predicament of Mohammed Aisha, who for the past four years was forced to live on an abandoned ship near the southern entrance of the Suez Canal in Egypt. I am Chief Officer of Motor Vessel Aman, Mohammed Aisha. I've been on board the ship since May 2017. I have to swim to shore every two or three days to charge my phone and to get food or water. Please help. A lot of you have inquired for updates regarding his situation. Well, here's a bit of good news. As of the 22nd of April, Mohammed Aisha was finally allowed to go home, thanks to the efforts of the International Transport Workers Federation, or ITF. Mohammed was the chief officer on board the Bahraini flag, MV Amman, and was on board the ship for only two months before it was detained by Egyptian authorities due to expired safety equipment and certificates in July 2017. With the ship's owner having abandoned MV Amman and the ship's Egyptian captain being already ashore, a local court appointed Muhammad as the vessel's legal guardian, which prevented him from leaving until the ship was sold or a replacement guardian was found. Muhammad said he wasn't told what the order meant exactly, and only found out later on when the other crew members started leaving. By August 2019, he was all alone, seemingly on a floating prison which was anchored off the coast of Adabia port. Occasionally, a guard went on board to check on him, but he was otherwise trapped on the ship, with no electricity, with unpaid wages, and very limited supplies. In March of 2020, a storm caused the Amman to drift five miles from its anchorage position, where it eventually ran aground, just a few hundred meters from the shore. When asked about that experience, Muhammad said it was terrifying, but also thought that it was an act of God, because it now enabled him to swim ashore every few days, to buy food and water, and to recharge his phone. The ITF has been representing Mr. Aisha's case to Egyptian port and immigration officials on an almost daily basis. After months of frustration and inaction from the ship owner, the Bahraini registry, and Egyptian authorities, a breakthrough came just last week. Apparently, the ITF offered one of its union representatives in Egypt to take Muhammad's place and become the legal guardian of the vessel, and thankfully, it was accepted by the court. If you're wondering, he's the guy in this photo standing beside Muhammad. And if I'm not mistaken, his name is Nasir Hussein. In the off chance that you are watching this, Mr. Nasir, you are a trooper. All the best wishes to you. And as for Muhammad Aisha, he is now safely at home with his family. He posted a photo on Twitter when he got home, so if any of you would like to wish him well, feel free to drop a comment on his Twitter account. According to the ITF Arab World and Iran Network coordinator, Mr. Mohammad Arashedi, the suffering caused to Mohammad Aisha could have been perfectly avoided if the ship owner and the other parties with obligations to him and the ship did the right thing from the start. On a side note, even though he is already at home and starting to rebuild his life, Muhammad Aisha's case is far from over. The ITF is still fighting to recover his unpaid wages, which is a common enough occurrence when ship owners abandon their vessels. At present, there are more than 250 active cases of crew abandonment according to the International Labor Organization. Mr. Arashedi added that it is absolutely unacceptable that it is always the seafarers who are made to pay the very high cost of abandonment. Abandonment is the cancer of the maritime industry and it needs to be eradicated. Let me share my experience with crew abandonment. No, I never experienced it myself, thankfully, but a few years ago, our ship went to port in Mauritius and within a few hours, some visitors came on board. They were Filipino seafarers from an abandoned fishing vessel nearby, and they told us about their situation. 
Their wages were unpaid, and what little food and other supplies they had were given to them by the local seamen's mission and from the other ships that came to that port. We gave them whatever food we can spare and supplies like soap, toothpaste, whatever they can use. If I remember correctly, they had been stuck there for two or three years. And back then, I couldn't imagine being in their situation, as it was the first time that I have ever learned that something like that could still happen in this day and age. I never found out what happened to them, but since this happened around seven years ago, I do hope they already made it back home. In any case, I agree with the stance that the ITF is taking on crew abandonment. It is pure evil and it has to stop. It's a good thing that most seafarers are quite resilient, but still, everyone has limits and no one deserves to be abandoned like that. In the case of Muhammad Aisha, he has lost four years living a nightmare trapped on board MV Amman. But now, thankfully, that nightmare is over. And talking about resilience, Muhammad is still undeterred and has expressed his eagerness to continue his seafaring career. So to Muhammad Aisha, all the best to you. Enjoy your time with your family and I wish you good fortune on your future endeavors.